Welcome back to Big Data on Bruce. Today with, well, basically the, the, the guy that made Kafka. Jay, welcome. Thanks. Um, Thanks for having me. Can you introduce yourself and uh, please introduce your pool you brought with you? Okay. Okay. So um, my name is Jay Krebs. Um, I've been in this kind of space of open source, big data stuff for a while, uh, even before Kafka, going back to key value stores and stuff like that. Um, for the last five years, I've really been focused on this kind of streaming data area. Um, I was originally at LinkedIn where a lot of this stuff was built and recently uh, left to start a company, Confluent, which is focused on, on Kafka. Um, and I'll, I'll introduce the beer. Um, so this is uh, Lagunitas, um, which is you know kind of my hometown, Petaluma, mm -hmm. California. I'm like a local, I'm a local kid. Um, One of the few. Yeah, it doesn't have that much. You know, when I was growing, now it's kind of adjacent to wine country. When I was growing up, it was more cow country. Um, <laughs> so at that time, it didn't have a brewery, but since I left, it developed a brewery, um, and so that's my beer. Let's open one. All right. At least one. All right. So what is that? An IPA? I don't really know. I, I, okay. We'll find out. Yes. So <clears throat> tell me the, the story of Kafka. You at LinkedIn, you need to move data, everything else isn't really sufficient. Why did you want to write a new publish subscribe system and didn't use any of the yeah. old JMS brokers or whatever? That's a good question. So, um, um, so like a lot of these things, it actually took some time. So we, um, you know, we were, the idea came about uh, actually almost when I got to LinkedIn. Um, there was this idea that we should like process data in real time, but it was very far fetched from anything we were doing. And I focused on a bunch of other things first. And the idea kind of really came back to the surface when we were doing Hadoop adoption. Mm -hmm. So we were, um, you know, we were building out our. I guess what you would call now a data lake, although yeah, my right. face. <laughs> Back then we called yeah, it. Yeah, it's Hadoop a file system. Funny story. <laughs> I invented the data lake. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so you know, we the, part of that project was really getting all the data that LinkedIn had into Hadoop, and we thought that was going to be really easy. And then we thought we would spend all the rest of our time on cool stuff. And it turned out, you know, it wasn't easy <laughs> until we got that part right. We weren't going to spend any time on cool stuff, and. Um, the we you know we had data kind of spread out over a bunch of different systems and um, each of them you know getting data out was kind of its own puzzle and very unreliable and and I ended up running you know the part of the team that was focused on that problem and um, you know prior to that I had no real background in you know data warehousing or ETL or any of that stuff but I, I was basically building kind of the you know ETL part of the data warehouse just not you know with Teradata and. Um, and so I kind of learned more how it, how it worked, and it was really unappealing to kind of build up a large team of consultants that was going to focus on these different data sources and transformations. So I thought, well, you, know, you can kind of invert that problem, and you could make it so that there was more like some contract with the data warehouse that you would publish into. And beyond that, you, you could actually you know try and do this in a way that it wasn't just focused on um, Hadoop. It wasn't just focused on the data warehouse. It would be, you know, the the way you publish data to everything in the organization, and you know make it so that applications could be built around that, and that um, other data systems could subscribe to that. And so we kind of backed into this idea of you know having some kind of central repository for streams of data, and we thought, well, you know, surely this exists already. Um, it, it sounds like a messaging system. And so we started doing kind of our homework on, on messaging systems and it seemed like a pretty reasonable fit. Um, and so we, we thought, okay, this is great. We're, we're just gonna take, you know, we'll, we'll bake off a few of these things. We'll, we'll put it into production, we'll be done. Um, and, um, you know, we, we actually started down that path and it didn't go as well as we'd hoped. Like we, we were using ActiveMQ in a few places, so we tried that. And it was just, you know, it was not really... It wasn't very stable back then, huh? Yeah, there was there was some instability. I think it was also not really aimed at this kind of like high volume mm -hmm. data where you're going to take everything happening in a big consumer scale website and like write it down. Every um, event, yeah. Yeah, that was like that was like not the target use case. And it wasn't, you know, I, I think it was kind of predating maybe the era of modern distributed systems where you mm -hmm. really kind of manage the sucker as a as a cluster, not as like a collection of servers. And so, so we had a lot of trouble with that and eventually we scrapped that idea and we basically just kind of shelved 
the whole project because it was like, well, this is not feasible. <laughs> it's too much trouble. Um, but as the pain of uh, getting data got higher, our, our interest in revisiting that got got higher, and we we were um, we were thinking more about primary data storage. We were thinking about these other systems. We were really thinking about this kind of commit log metaphor that shows up a lot, and and that was really kind of how we stumbled on you know doing Kafka and trying to make that a little bit um, you know actually have that be something that's not just an implementation detail, but something that was really the, the goal mm -hmm. of the system to provide that service to everything else. Um, well, by the way. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. So um, let me double click on a few things you said there. Um, so at that time, I think Facebook also published their way of collecting data. And um, if I remember correctly, written in C++, yep. so, like, you know, what was the ecosystem like, and why did you guys yeah, go and like we yeah, build our own yeah. rather than using something you talked about, um, ActiveMQ, right? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So we looked at the space of messaging systems, and we looked at, you know, the collection of things maybe you would call like file aggregation, mm -hmm. log aggregation. Um, Scribe had come out, but it was just not really actively maintained. Um, Flume actually hadn't come out until we started working on this. Um, but it was close enough to describe that mm -hmm. we felt like it was similar. Um, and you know, I guess the more we looked at it, the more we were convinced that um, you know, thinking of it as aggregating log files was a little too primitive. Mm -hmm. um, that the messaging people were kind of onto something, um, and that the right way to do that layer would really be to you know kind of treat this type of event data as a first class citizen. So the idea was. Yeah, you want something which is a little bit like a file system in that it stores the past, but also like a messaging system in that you subscribe to the future mm -hmm. and kind of combine those two. If you're trying to build something that you know processes from the past to the future, that's really what you would want. And so we we became convinced that that was different enough and important enough in what we were doing um, that it was worth kind of going it alone. Um, and we kind of been down this route of building these type of infrastructure systems before we kind of understood what the pros and cons were of trying to get something from open source and make it work versus build something from scratch. Where do you think, um, what was the point where Kafka really took off? Yeah, that's interesting. So um, it was originally, I think, very unsuccessful as an open source project. Um, I think primarily because of branding. I, I was a fan. Yeah, yeah. There was I, a, I was at all your presentations. All right, all then, right, all right. In the beginning. So there was um, there was definitely a small set of people who um, were were pretty enthusiastic, but most people were like, you know, what what is it? And we weren't even hundred percent sure what it what it was category wise. So we went with messaging system, but nobody was that excited about those. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the the excitement kind of grew as uh, people started thinking about this problem of data flow, and then also thinking about um, stream processing and more real-time mm -hmm. processing and what would you need to actually support that. And it mm -hmm. turns out you would need some kind of stream of, <laughs> of you need to process. Data stream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so people were like, oh, how do you get that? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that was what we were thinking as well, but um, you know, the, the category wasn't quite there, and so, so we definitely had this problem of explaining uh, what we'd done. Mm -hmm. And so it was actually very different. The the one of the systems we'd done before that was called Baltimore. It was a key value store. And that one was super easy to explain. It was just like distributed hash table. You know, it's like a database, but without all the features and more scalable, right? And everyone was like, oh, that sounds, I know what that is, very useful. Kafka was more like, you know, a little too different. And people mm -hmm. were like, oh. <laughs> Something new, right? Yeah, yeah. And so. Um, Didn't fit into the box. That's right, that's right. So, uh, but nonetheless, we kind of persisted on it, and um, you know, it, it actually gathered interest uh, pretty steadily. Like, if you look at, you know, whatever interest in the project, mailing list, any of that stuff is just like you know, up and to the right. But but no, you know, no big spike. Just kind of gathering interest. It it got into production at a set of uh, Silicon Valley companies mm -hmm. that were looking. Yeah, you know, I, I think there was enough companies kind of coming of age at the same time who were looking at what kind of internal infrastructure people had. Mm -hmm. So what did, you know, what did Facebook and, and so on have internally? And they all had some kind of big data pipeline. And I think people thought, oh, we, <laughs> we need that. Mm -hmm. And so you see now, you know, a bunch of these kind of big, uh, 
uh, unicorn companies or whatever, ha you know, have these really big uh, Kafka data pipelines. And it was all just because they were building at that time where, you know, you would kind of be aware of this project. And as more and more people did this, it became kind of less weird and mm -hmm. risky. And, and now it's actually, you know, relatively common and probably not, right. probably not that yeah. risky. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> it's the go-to technology for, for that kind of problem, right? Yeah, totally.